everybody and welcome to another session here at SECPA. I hope you're all well. Um, SECPA acknowledges that this event takes place on the lands of the Blackfoot people in the Métis Nations of Alberta Region 3. And we pay respect to their past, present, future and cultural heritage beliefs and relationship to the land. Um, today we have with us Amy Mendenhall. Uh, who is the Vice President of Student Affairs for the University of Lethbridge Student Union. As a fourth year student in the Indigenous Study and History program, Amy serves the student body as a mature student, bringing a wealth of experience and history of community service and volunteerism, beginning from the young age of 13. Amy's a mother of three, is originally from Red Deer and began volunteering with the Red Deer Regional Hospital Boys and Girls Club and students and teachers opposing prejudice. Red Deer Food Bank, International Student Club and a member of the first official Gay Straight Alliance in Alberta. Amy was awarded the Premier's Award of Excellence for her work with her successful passing of an anti-bullying bylaw in Red Deer and was also awarded the Young Citizen of the Year for Red Deer in, 20, in 2006 for volunteer work. Amy graduated from the Red Deer College with an Educational Assistant Certificate in 2013 and the New York Institute of Photography in 2017. Through her continued activism, Amy strives to support the U of L students in their challenges at the University of Lethbridge. Thank you so much for joining us, Amy. I know that this was super last minute. We are very thankful that you're here today and we look forward to your talk. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for the one wonderful introduction. Um, I am Amy Mendenhall, as said, and I am super excited to come to you and speak to you about affordability and food insecurity at the University of Lethbridge. Um, so if you wanna just move this slide. Yep. Thank you. So, the University of Lethbridge Student Union Food Bank serves our community. So we serve undergraduate and the uh, graduate students. And we have a campus of around 9,000 people, maybe a little bit more uh, pre-COVID. We do have people online and people in person right now, but we are still actively giving out food. Um, we are available, like as mentioned, to all students. Any student who needs support comes to us and we give them hampers um, during the COVID year, we had just gift cards because of COVID transmissions and such, but now we are back to accepting food. And what do we need right now? We need absolutely everything. Our food bank is running very empty and we have a lot of students that need support. If you could just move to the next slide for me. Thank you. So I've added some photos on there and while these photos look, photos look like we're doing well, those are photos from the internet from a few years ago. Um, we, with the pandemic and rising living costs, our students are struggling and we need donations to get our food banks stocked up and continue to be stocked up to support students throughout this year and beyond. The amount of food hampers that we have provided since, since September 1st is 50, so 50 students have come to us asking for support. But keep in mind that students still have their student loans and are able to buy food at that time. Usage will pick up in November when the student loans start running out which is why our upcoming food drive is so important. So what you're gonna see in these photos, you'll see our massive food bank in the bottom there, but we also provide little food banks that we keep stocked continuously. And those are placed all over our campus. So students can go there and we sometimes have diapers there as well, we, but we have lots of non-perishable food items that they can take for meals. And as well, though this isn't technically who we're supporting, we don't refuse them, we have community members who also who come off our buses and come and use our food bank, uh, these little areas here. So we do have continually, these are used every single day and we have to keep them up. And like I said, our food bank is empty or emptying. So we desperately need these donations so that we can not only do these hampers that we do, but continuously feed students throughout our campus and eventually people also from our community who, while we are not technically supporting them, we're not going to refuse them either. So, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so, we have a feed or famine food drive coming up. And what this is, is on October 23rd, student clubs that have signed up 
For certain neighborhoods in Lethbridge, we're hoping all neighborhoods, but this is asking a lot of students. So on October 23rd, we will be dropping off little pamphlets of information and we'll be like, hey, this is what we need, fill a bag, and then you have the week and on Halloween, our students will be coming out again to collect food. So we've had a few, about seven neighborhoods picked up. Um, you'll, if you're in these neighborhoods, you'll also see me in the OSU truck, picking up the food, bringing it. But this food drive is the first big food drive of the year. And because like I said, we, our pickup will start again in November, we are in desperate need to make sure that not only are we able to provide for students now, but come November, come Christmas, come when people's money starts ending, because for those who don't know the student loan route, we get money on September 1st, and then we get money on January 1st. So the money runs out around Christmas, and that is when students need food and meals and such, because not everybody goes home. We have a lot of students that stay here. We have a lot of students that live off campus. We have a lot of mature students like myself with young children who are spending money on Christmas. And while there is support in the community for them, not everybody has those accessible to them. And so our food drive goes into full, full tilt trying to support these students. Um, next slide. So I wanted to do a little bit of information for you about living in Lethbridge and why are students hungry? Because I think some people don't understand the costs that go along with being a student. So currently tuition, and this is from the University of Lethbridge website, so keep in mind this is just a base price, is about $4,514 per semester. Um, that tuition is just under 10 grand per academic year. But that does not include the full cost of books. Often books are about five to $600 per semester. Um, if they're taking more than the uh, typical amount of classes, we have some students who take five, lab, five classes and they have five labs on top of it. That's it, hundreds and hundreds of dollars more. Um, and if, for example, our art students um, also pay for all their materials. So any project they work on, anything that that at all to get grades, they have to pay for. And so while they actually prepare for it, I know that many are struggling. I myself took a couple art classes and was not prepared for the extra three, four hundred dollars I had to spend on art materials. Um, and the rise in living costs in Westbridge. So everybody knows the economy in 2020 did not do well. Um, when the pandemic officially hit right before the summer, all the jobs that students used vanished. And so everybody was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna work. I know I was like that. I'm gonna work during the summer. And suddenly our jobs were gone. So many of us spent the summer living at home, like living, so, well, I was at home with my husband who didn't get, who lost his job as well during the pandemic. We have lots of students who had 24 to 48 hours notice to get out of residence. And that's expensive because they're suddenly, if they're not going home, you're suddenly having to find a new house and you don't have a job. And it's, it was a mess for a lot of students. I know one student who actually had to leave the country because she couldn't afford to stay here. She had to go home and her home was out of the country. And so she spent her, the rest of her academic year outside of the country she's been learning. Um, many were left to collect SERV or the student version of SERV, which helped them survive. But they then had to pay back during tax season which I don't know if you understand as a student, but tax season's kind of our thing. It's that, that February thing where you're suddenly not broke for five minutes and you can afford food. Suddenly we're all paying back $4,000 and we had nothing left. I know that was myself. If I hadn't had my husband who had collected serve, but also thankfully I managed to get work, we would have been out almost 10 grand. So it was a real struggle. And the economy is still struggling. Like the jobs are kind of coming back, but we have students who can't be out. Like they're, they've had to do online education because of their health health issues. They can't work in the public right now as it's not safe. And so we have lots of students who, while they want to work and still work, they also have to put their health and safety first because while it, it's not fun, we're still in the middle of a pandemic and we got to keep them safe. And this extra cost of online school, which was great. Online school was a great option for many, but a serious financial burden on so many students. Buying new computers, faster internet, and all things tech. Um, for 
just so that people understand if say five students are living in the same house which is often the case your internet can't handle that so you have to pay hundreds more dollars to be continuously streaming zoom in four different computers in four different classes and that still didn't work for a lot of students we have a very high indigenous population which is fantastic but many of them and many of our professors, indigenous professors live out in the blood reservation and they live out in the rural areas and they didn't have Wi-Fi. And that is a cost issue and it's completely unacceptable, but it was one that was unfortunately completely ignored during the pandemic. And they, they had to eat these costs and that's not a cost most students are prepared to pay when they join school. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Is Lethbridge expensive? Yes, actually, I did some research to make sure, but the average rent for one person not wanting to live with roommates is $1,611 per month. That's including utilities. And we have actually broke it and made it into the top 25 cities, the most expensive cities in the world to live. Families are forced to pay considerably more, so mature students, because there is no family housing on, in the University of Lethbridge, and the average rent for a family of four is over $3,000. It's nearly $4,000 a month. And so if you are trying to go to school, you're paying daycare fees, which as a mom, like I right now pay about $400 a month for daycare fees. But when I had all three children in daycare, it was $1,000 a month. So on top of my tuition, I was also paying $1,000 a month. And many people pay more. We have school fees now. So think the average student, average mature student is spending about five to six thousand dollars a month on housing and daycare. And then they have they're also trying to go to school and working full time with school is dang near impossible. I know because I'm doing it. <laughs> um, if able to work full time while in full time classes, students are bringing home approximately two thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars per month. That is approximate 40 hour work weeks which as you can see is that doesn't cover anything. And that means that they're not eating. And as a student, I have come to school hungry. I have used the food bank. There was times for prior to the pandemic that my husband lost his job and my only income was the student or was my tuition or student loan, sorry. And um, I did delivery driving with $7 a delivery for over a year to try and make ends meet. So I have come to school hungry and I know how it feels to have to look in these food bank things around the school and see what can I eat today? Or I remember a couple years ago, there was a job fair here and people were giving out candy. And one day I was like, I'm going to go see if they have some apples or fruit because I'm hungry. And I mean, we were okay. Thankfully we had food bank support from here and through our church, but it was a, it was a struggle for a bit. And I know I'm not alone in those struggles and I'm thankfully okay now. But the, so the cost to live on campus. So I just broke it down a little bit here. So a housing application fee is $150. Room deposit is $900. New university students are mandatory meal plans or 500 for students living on campus, which means that they have to pay this. And yes, well, that means food. Not everybody can eat the food on campus. Not everybody wants to eat Tim Hortons every day. Not everyone wants to eat that. And so they are left, they pay for that, but then they also have to pay for groceries. Um, their security deposit is $400. And this does not include car payments, gas, cost of traveling, or students do not want to eat on campus, which is a very fair thing. Not everybody wants to eat the same meal every single day. And just so that you're aware, last, when, when the school shut down during the pandemic, this money that was on these meal plans didn't get refunded in its entirety. A lot of students were actually buying chocolate bars and pop and everything in that 24 hours that were they were evicted so that at least went somewhere. And so on campus, rent is anywhere between $1,848 per semester to $3,400 per semester, depending on where you want to live on campus. So if you want to live, like if you're a first year, you're probably paying the first one. If you're a fourth year, you're paying the second one. But this is per student, and some of this is like you have four people living in the same house and they're all paying this much. So these are this isn't cheap, this isn't affordable for students. And again, we have students who do not have cars even, that they might have the money for groceries, but because they don't have the money to go to the store, like to get to the store, they use our food bank. Or they come and get food because they can't get anywhere. 
So it's very expensive to live on campus, and it's unfortunately a sad reality that many of our students face. Next slide, please. Thank you. So what do we need? We need donations. Food or Famine Food Drive, I have attached a Google sheet there, but you're welcome to email me or contact me and I can hook you up. We hope we have clubs that hit every neighborhood, but if not, we need others to know that you are willing to donate. We need to know that you're willing to donate to our food bank. If you don't see us in your, in your neighborhood, all you need to do is email me at ulsu.studentaffairs at gmail.com and I will come pick we need to get our we need to get our food bank our food the we need to be able to support our students. So what can you do? You can donate. You can join us in our food drive. If you have children or if you want to get out, you can come here and I'll give you a neighborhood and some stuff and you can go do it for us. And you can donate through the year. It's not just a one time thing. If you have extra food and you're like, oh, I'm not going to eat this or I don't want it before it expires, you can give it. Um, if you want to make a cash donation, anything over $50 gets a charitable receipt. So there's lots of ways to help us. If you give us cash, then we can just buy it. And you don't have to donate. Much. But it works really well. So that is the completion. Right? I know I'm a little fast, but I'm happy to take questions. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. And thank you for caring about our students because we we need support our students need support and we need to we need to pin our communities with them excellent thanks so much for your presentation um before we go to the q a i just wanted to know how do we donate i i don't see anywhere on your slides um how we can donate so i was just wondering if we can add that in um, look, do we call somewhere? Do we bring it somewhere? Do we, yeah. 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 So you, if you go to the ulsu.ca, I believe it is our website, the university of Lethbridge student union and click on food bank. There is a whole way. All the information is there. Mm -hmm. Um, we have, sorry, they gave me this information sheet about the food bank while I was there. But you can contact food.bank at ulef.ca um, website with the food bank, or you can phone 403-329-2222. And any one of those will get you us, and then we can uh, get you into support. But if you want to bring food, you just bring food to the University of Lethbridge Student Union building. We're on the first floor. You'll see Student Union. And you just bring it in and we'll be happy to take it. Great. Um, can I just um, make sure I got that right before I put the slide up? I'm just quickly making a slide with this information. So it's ulsu.ca and then food.bank at ulsu.ca. Yep. And what's the phone number? 403-329-2222. Yep. Okay. Let me just put up this slide for folks. Um, there it is. There are all the contact information. Um, and we will go to the questions. And our first question is from Timothy um, at the Leftbridge Herald. Where did you get your average rent statistics? Sources for other stats as well, please. Okay, yeah, for sure. I'm just going to go to it while I'm on here so I yep. can show you. I thought about putting it in there and then I did not. And that is me making this at 8 o'clock at night. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to move over. So, basically, I... Get so, what I did is last night I googled Lethbridge average rent. And... I'm just going to do that again because... Okay. Sorry, give me a sec. All right, so um, if you go to Numbio and cost of living in Lethbridge, that is where a lot of my stats came from. And they have everything there from like 
the cost of drinking and the cost of our tickets and everything. It's just people put those in there. Um, but by apartment price, it was per price per square meter to buy apartment to city center. So they have all the different prices there. So I had found those on new deal, the cost of living. Okay. Uh, next question comes from Knut Peterson. Please explain what kind of relationship the ULSU Food Bank have with the Leftbridge Food Bank. Um, so with the Leftbridge Food Bank, we have a decent relationship from what I understand. Uh, when they have something extra, I know they've donated to us. Um, there's no negative information. There's no negative things there at all. But uh, our students come to us first, and then they can use that food bank. But again, because of travel issues and such, it's not easy for everyone. And so they have supported us in the past. Um, I was here, actually, when they got a whole bunch of stuff from the Lethbridge Food Bank <laughs> that was extra. So they are supportive of us, and there's times where they reach out, and they're like, we have extras, and so all the food banks in town that serve other communities can go and help. But I just wanted to... Uh, Add to the next last question because the website I had found actually popped up. So the new bio, but also livingcost.org is where I got other things as well. I just popped up on my thing. But yeah, it's a good relationship. It's a really good relationship with the other food banks. Um, but our food bank is for students, and that's who we support. And community members who come off the street and use it are uh, small ones. Okay, our next question comes from Timothy again. How much does the transit distance for groceries play into students not accessing as much food off campus? That was a big problem in my students' days too. It's a huge issue. Um, we have talked about in the past like having a bus that would take students to get groceries, but unfortunately it hasn't been accessed as much as we've wanted it to. So. A lot of students that I find that can't go, they do use our food bank, like our small ones. They do get hampers there, but it is definitely a huge issue. It's also a, like a mobility issue because even if you can go on the bus and get to a store, you also have to take those heavy groceries down to wherever you live. And the bus only goes to the front of the university. It doesn't go anywhere else. So mobility is a huge, huge problem here. Um, we are aware. And we have tried in the past to fix it, but because we haven't had the best results, it's kind of fizzled out. But I, as a VPSA, I have thought of things this year because it's only October and we're still working on stuff. But the plan is is to try and get those buses out if students want them again. But also a reminder, it is COVID season, so some students don't feel comfortable getting into a bus full of people right now. They, It's just, unfortunately, the world we're in right now that transportation, being in big groups of people, it's all playing a part in people choosing not to have, if even if they had the money to go to the food bank, or not the food bank, sorry, money to go to the grocery store, they might not go for safety reasons. Hmm. Mark Goodall uh, has a next question. Do you accept perishable items? Um, I We say non-perishable because they're in, they're stuck in there, but I'm sure, like I've seen, I've, I've seen it before, that if we did have perishable items, what I would do is I would just put up uh, something upstairs with a sign that says free, and so people can come grab them. It's not something we can store, but it's something for sure that we could give away, I'm sure. Our next question comes from Beth Mundo. Has the ULSU talked to university administrators to see about removing mandatory food plan from its campus residence? There has been complaints like, made against it, and I mean, we don't have a huge pull on that because that is housing and that is their rules and they vote on it every year. But we have mentioned it, we have taken complaints about it over the years. I haven't myself this year had any complaints to me yet, but I'm sure they're happening to the other exec. I just haven't heard anything. But we have, we have mentioned it. We have said like, this isn't beneficial for everyone, but it's because they do it and they vote on it. So it would have to be a full, a full project to try and get this. And then there is students that like the $500. Like it's, it's hard because there's some students who like it and then there's some students it really doesn't help. So it's just, it's a lot out of my hands, unfortunately. Our next question comes from Lori Schultz. Uh, Knut Peterson did put the link in there, https ulsu.ca forward slash 
ulsu-food-bank. Thanks, Knud, for putting the link in there for people to follow. Uh, Laurie Schultz, how often does the ULSU organize food drives throughout the year? So that is actually my thing. Um, I did a food drive, we tried anyway, earlier this summer. There wasn't a big intake because it was raining, unfortunately. Um, then there's this one that we're doing right now. And I'm doing as many as I can. Any event that I do, I also am like, hey, you can pay the full price or you can bring food. But like because of COVID, a lot of our events right now have gotten canceled. So I'm not able to do this, but I do food bank drives and I'm planning to do one similar in at Christmas time for mature students. It's as often as the VPSA will do it. And unfortunately we change out every year. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Timothy from the Lethbridge Herald says that according to the Alberta government, average two bedroom rental price is $1,029. I'm sure that's a Alberta average. Uh, Tim, is that a Lethbridge average? Uh, it seems to conflict anyway with the data that you've given us, Amy. Would you like to comment? Um, I got mine from livingcost.org, and I can say as a student, um, that's not accurate at all for many, many of our students. I know I'm, I got a cheap rental, um, and I'm paying 1200 for a four bedroom, but I, that was random. A lot of our students are living in places where it's 1700 a month. So I, while that says that Alberta government has given that statistics, Alberta is or Lethbridge is very expensive. Lethbridge is a Lethbridge is a student city, so people know they can charge higher. And all of mine came from livingcost.org, so I that's where I got my information from. So, okay. Our next uh, question comes from Beth Mundell. Are you in touch with the college students? I assume they have a similar situation. No no on-campus housing um well with the lethbridge college is two different institutions i met with them once with the lethbridge or the L lethbridge college student association we we do work together in some sense but we are completely two different institutions so they have their food bank we have ours their housing is completely different it's Unfortunately, we can't compare with they. I do believe they have student or family housing there. I'm not sure, but it's completely different, like money and cost and everything. So unfortunately, no, in this relation, we don't really talk about it, but I'm open to it <laughs> if they ever reach out. Mm -hmm. um, Bev Mundell also has a comment. Shoppers on the West side has a small grocery section. Do you want to comment on that or should we, do you want to leave it or, yeah? Well, Shoppers does, like I live right by Shoppers, but it's also very expensive. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand that like the cost of going to Shoppers isn't always beneficial. Like I, I told students you can get rewards points and such, but not every student wants to spend the money there. But I know they do, they do, <laughs> they, they walk there if they can, but it's very small and it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, our next uh, comes from Christy, who doesn't have a question, but a clarification. The cost of tuition and fees for five courses, and then in brackets, 15.0 credit hours, each semester in 2021-2022 is $3,374.15 for domestic students. That's great. I got my information from the U University of Lethbridge website, so... I thank you for clarifying that. I literally just looked it up on the ULF, ULF website. Okay. Laurie Schultz, can you describe how the on-campus food plan works? Yeah. So basically students live, if, you, if you've never been to campus, there's a uh, student housing under, in the basement essentially of the University of Lethbridge underneath U-Haul. So when people come to U-Haul, they just go down the elevator and that's where people live. Um, so they have a card and they go up and they can buy food at um, the food services down there. They can buy it at Tim Hortons, I believe, um, Starbucks, I think. And please understand, I've never lived on campus, so I don't exactly know everywhere that they can spend it, but that's, there's a general area there where they can go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But it's not everybody's favorite food, unfortunately. 
And so if in need, they can go and have meals there, but that runs out pretty quick if you're continuously eating or if you're having meals and such. But that's generally how it works is that they can get these meals and go up and choose these few restaurants where they can eat. Okay, um, Knut Peterson, please explain how donated money for food is distributed. I.e., do you purchase the food, or is the f or is food vouchers given to the needy? In that regard, how do you determine need? Um, so we have our so when food is given or food money is given, then we do go buy groceries with it. Um, we have had gift cards. In the past, so there may be gift cards given out for like meat and milk and such things that don't hold well in our hampers. Uh, all through COVID, we only gave gift cards out. But we normally, yeah, we buy gift cards and we buy groceries and we determine need. Um, it's all it's all in the office here. We have somebody who's assigned to it. Um, it's I just have the information right in front of me, so I'll read it out. Um, act, people can access the food bank to twice a month to a maximum of 10 visits per their academic career. Um, all food hampers are non-perishable, can and packaged. We will try to accommodate dietary restrictions and all the food is supplied by donations. So we go out and buy it and we have the small gift cards and it's decided in need to the paperwork work that we have. So we know who needs it. Okay, our next question comes from Lori Schultz. Are there other ULSU or on-campus projects to support students? Um, like for the food bank or, well, there is as long as I can do them. Yeah. So it's literally, it's all me. You're looking at the person who organizes everything. So if you want to do something and you think it'd be a good idea, please reach out and I will do it as much as the university will let me. <laughs> Cause unfortunately, we, with the, with the pandemic, we did have a large event plan that should have brought in lots of donations. And then we had to cancel it three days before it happened. So it's, there will be more throughout the year. This one is the big one for October. We have a haunted house hopefully happening at the end of the year or at the end of the year, at the end of the month as well, that I'll be accepting donations there. Um, we're going to be doing hampers at Christmas, but yeah, as long as, as long as I can keep doing it and safely do it and follow all the rules that the university puts out for COVID relations and the Alberta government, then I will do food drives as much as I can. Is there a limit on how much a student can use the food bank? Yes. So I just, it's right here. Um, access to the food bank is twice a month to a maximum of 10 visits per academic career. Um, but the usage of those tiny ones that I showed, like the hallway ones, are not limited. So they can take whatever they want from there. Okay. Um, um, Timothy, nutrition was another problem in my student days. Is food available on campus healthier than the food in my days? Um, having said that, we don't know what your dates, days are, Timothy, but I'm sure she can answer. It's... I mean, they have fruits and vegetables and such offered down there, but it's essentially food that you would get from a cafeteria. Mm. Like we don't, it's, we have a healthy section down there and people can choose to eat it if they want to, but yeah, it's, it's, it's what it, it is, what it is. We have great food. We have, we have like food that is, comes from like, you know, the typical cafeteria. It's just dependent on what they order, but they, we do have healthy food available for students on campus. Mark Goodall, do you receive donations directly from some of the grocery stores like the other food banks apparently do? Um, I haven't seen any that I, but I've only been here for since May. I haven't seen any come in. We recently got a great donation from our, uh, the beekeeper here at the University of Lethbridge gave a whole bunch of honey. Um, but no, not that I've seen, I don't, I haven't seen that come in, but I, I could be wrong. I just haven't seen it myself and I don't have the person who accepts the donations beside me. So unfortunately for what I've seen, no, but we may have in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess that question also then goes, uh, if I can elaborate on that question, farmers, I just saw last week, 
uh, Perry Farms, the potato farmer, saying, you know, come and get potatoes. There was a whole bunch of potatoes that people could just come and get. Like, would you accept those kind of donations from farmers directly? I would. I mean, I would if I could go get them. And like I said, I would put a table upstairs that says free. Because I've seen that happen at the college as well. Mm -hmm. They get a lot of fruits and vegetables. They put them on a table that says free. As long as the university allows me, just because of the COVID rules, again, I would be happy to do that. So if they reached out to me and, or if I saw that, I would happily do that. Yes. Mm, okay. Our next question comes from um, Cliff Peterson. There's a popular belief among many people that students always manage to have enough money left for beer and the like, therefore going hungry. What are your thoughts? Uh, we have a large population that doesn't drink actually here. Um, and I, like myself, I don't drink. The beer on campus is actually really, like, uh, I've, I've never actually seen poor students eating. Like, if you can be drinking beer, you're not there. As somebody who was hungry here, I would never have bought alcohol before I could buy food. And honestly, people buy drinks for each other. The idea that students are choosing alcohol over food is kind of, it's classist a little bit. We, our students deserve to have fun a little bit, but they're not gonna buy beer over eating. That's just, that's not the way it is here. Bev Mundell, have you tried on campus food drives? Perhaps advertising so, advertising, perhaps advertised so cars arriving could drop off items as they arrive on campus. Are there food drop offs, drop off points on campus? I haven't done that yet, but that <laughs> is actually a great idea. But yes, you can drop off food at the University of Lethbridge Student Union. We have a um, our back door here, our loading dock, if you would just call us and be like, hey, I'm here, I, one of us would come out and grab food. So if you do have group donations, you can come to the loading dock and just give us a call and one of us will come out there and pick it up. And that sounds like a great idea, actually, that I'm going to invest in because, like I said, I've only been here since May and every year we get a new VPSA. So it's up to the VPSA of that year to decide on what food drives we're doing. Okay. And then Mark Goodall, are you registered as a charity? And if so, are you able to issue tax receipts? Yes, um, with over $50. So if you donate $50 and we have an envelope and you will get a uh, receipt, yes. Okay, and then Timothy, Second Harvest in Fort McLeod is always looking to supply additional foods to various local organizations. Has the ULSU Food Bank reached out to the organizations to have, have they reached out to organizations like Second Harvest? I'm actually not sure. Like I said, I've seen donations come in from other places. I could actually bring that up today and I could reach out to Second Harvest. I didn't know that actually. Um, so I'm happy to do that. I just, I don't know because she's not here with me, no. but I will bring that up and I will ask for sure. And Timothy, if you want to reach out to my email, I'm happy to be like, yeah, this or whatever. I just don't have the answer, unfortunately, right now. Yeah, you should t tell them to reach out to Perry Farms as well, because I know they had surplus potatoes. <laughs> yes. um, that's it for all our questions in the queue at this point. Um, do you want to add something more to the presentation or um, a take home message for our viewers? Yeah, um, I just want to say, like, I know it sounds like we're begging, um, but our students are really important. Um, mm -hmm. Our students have been through a lot this last 18 months. We've had online schooling. They were Some of them were evicted from their homes for uh, with very little notice. Um, and I think it's just important to remember that there is lots of rumors and there is lots of stuff about students, but our students are good, really good people. They're hardworking. If you see them up having a drink, it's probably because they deserve it. <laughs> to be honest. We, they, they're, this is a campus of great people and nobody deserves to be hungry, no matter what they do. Spending money on a drink, they still deserve to be fed. And I just wanna thank you for listening and thank you for watching my presentation. And if you, like I mentioned, if you have donations to give, you have the contact information. Um, if, you see our, if you see our pamphlet come in your door, on at the end of the month, please consider giving 
and being kind to the students because they're doing this out of their volunteer work. It's not paid. They're, they're doing the work for me. So I want to thank you on behalf of the University of Western Student Union and the students who use our food bank for even listening to me. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I know it was super short notice, so we're very thankful that you, uh, you pulled it together as you did. A fantastic presentation. I hope that all our listeners today will uh, spend a moment donating to the food bank for the university students and um, come and join us next week, uh, same time, Thursday at noon, for another SACPA presentation. Thank you so much. Okay.